period. No lights, no cameras, no action for the film industry as the COVID-19 pandemic redefined the summer blockbuster. That blockbuster being watched at home. But for those who run theaters, I guess the question is, when do you reopen and are the people going to come back? Joining us right now from Tel Aviv is Muki Gredinger, he's CEO of Cineworld. It's the parent company of the Regal Cinemas chain that, of course, is popular here uh, in the U.S. Muki, uh, no one uh, better to talk to about the state of the movie industry, of the theater industry, I should say. When do you expect to get your operations back up to something even close to what you had prior to the COVID-19 crisis? Step by step, I will start my answer, you know, and I will say, first of all, we want to see all the cinemas in all our territories uh, reopen. Uh, we are currently operating in 10 different countries, and we are already open in four of them. And uh, next week, the FIPS is joining. Uh, the bigger one, which are the U.S. and the U.K., uh, are now planned for the 31st of July. Of course, this is all subject to permissions from the authorities. Uh, we are ready. We have invested a lot in creating a safe environment in our cinemas, all kinds of uh, procedures that will be taken when our customers will come. The importance for us of really keeping our customers and our team uh, in a safe uh, situation is very, very important. When are we going to be back in business as we were before? I guess it will take a few months, but with the big movies that are still planned for the rest of 2020, mm. I'm sure it's not going to be too long. Of course, the key movies really to welcome people back to the cinema world has been Tenet, has been Mulan. They're the key ones which I know you're hanging your hat on. Are you worried that the studios will have to push these back further, that they might not want to open amid the concern that customers just aren't quite ready to come back to Regal, come back to Cineworld? I think anyone in the world that have experienced the COVID-19 uh, experience here is worried. We should be worried. This is our job. I still believe that there is a room now for Tenet to open mid-August and Mulan uh, uh, 10 days later. I hope it will happen. Uh, if they will move, we are not losing the movies. This is one of the advantages. These are huge movies and uh, uh, they will stay with us. But I still believe that we can do August. But our responsibility as a management, of course, is to see that our company will be ready uh, for a situation that this will be postponed and we will need to stay close for a little more. So, Muki, let's talk about some of the longer-term trends here, because even prior to the COVID crisis, uh, we saw ticket sales, at least here in North America, uh, had continued to decline. They dropped about 4% in 2019. There seems to be much more of a shift, whether it's by studios or whether it's by the public, uh, to watch movies, big-budget movies, at home, whether it's through Netflix or some of the other streaming channels. How does your business fit into this environment where a lot of directors and a lot of studios are now starting to look and Netflix and Hulu and the other streaming channels as a viable alternative to get their movies out there? So, so let's start with the facts, okay? The 4% decrease, which is the 4% decrease last year in the U.S., made 2019 the second biggest ever year in the box office. 2018, by the way, was the biggest. So I don't think this is a, any, has any uh, implementation on our business. Second, 2019 was the biggest year ever internationally. We need to remember that the new markets that have developed in the last 10 to 15 years have added a lot to the value of our industry. The cinemas have grossed in 2019 worldwide $43 billion. Out of this, the studios and the other distributors and movie makers have taken something like $20 billion. This is not something you give up easily. I'm fully aware, you know, that there is a lot of money being spent by companies like Apple and Amazon and Netflix, of course, on movies and taking talents and creating some of the movies that will be directly put in the home entertainment. But I don't see the home entertainment as competition. Hmm. My family has been in this business for 90 years, by the way. In 2nd of June, we celebrated our 90th year anniversary. And through the years, almost every five years, somebody would come and say, this is the end of the cinema business. First the TV arrived, then the video, then the DVD, then cable, whatever. Now we have the streaming era, and it is a great business. 
but it is not coming instead of going out. Nobody wants to be at home seven days a week. I see more as our competition, mm -hmm. parks, restaurants, and places like this, and the big movies, and the big movie makers wants to, their movies to be seen first and foremost on the big screen. Mm. And this is why it is our duty as exhibitors to improve the cinema experience all the time. And this is one of the main strategies of Cineworld and Regal. We're investing a lot of money into creating an environment that people will come and say, wow. And I just want to remind everyone that the experience is not only the technological experience, the big screen and everything. There is also a social experience mm. in seeing movies together. And when 200 or 300 people are watching together a movie which is very frightening or is very funny, it's a different uh, experience altogether than seeing it at home with maybe two or three people around. Yeah. So I, I don't think this is the direction. There was a lot of noise now about some of the movies that went into streaming, but this is natural because the cinemas were closed. There yeah. are all kinds of discussions around it all the time, but the cinema industry is very strong. And I say again, you know, 2019 was the biggest year ever. 2020 probably, unfortunately, will be one of the weakest one, but it's not because of us. Yeah. And I hope that 2021 will see again a great year. Mookie, I want to speak to you not only with your 90 years as, as your family's experience within cinemas, but we, as a global business leader right now, you are sat in Tel Aviv, we are sat in the US, you have dominant force in terms of Cineworld's presence in the United States, in the UK, but you're across some 11 countries or so. Talk to us about which governments are getting it right. Talk to us about which countries you're finding it the easiest to be able to reopen or find that safety, balance of safety with enjoyment that you so hope to strike. I think at the end of the day, you know, I can talk now for half an hour in comparing territories because we are operating in 10 territories and we are also following very closely what's happening in the other territories. I think in general, the leaders have here something that they never experienced before. And there is a lot of responsibility. At the end of the day, the responsibility is on the shoulders of the governor of New York and not on my shoulders. So I fully understand that there are different rules and different restrictions, but all of them, first of all, are talking to us, and all of them are listening to us. And if the restrictions are too tough for some reason or doesn't make sense for another reason, they listen to us, we talk to them, we have strong organizations also uh, 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 in the countries, and we explain and we are being heard. We need to remember that Reopening the cinemas in the U.S. means that something around one million people will go back to work. This mm. is very significant. It's not only the issue of the cinema or the entertainment, but it needs to be safe. We are working on it. There are different ways of supporting uh, uh, between governments. There are all kinds of efforts. I will tell you, for example, that the British government have uh, initiated now a reduced on the VAT a, a level for cinema tickets and for other entertainment and out dining and uh, all this just in order to give this business a boost. There are some uh, countries that helped more with the issue of the uh, employees. Some governments were stronger in loans. So there are many, many differences mm. around it. And many governments are changing from time to time uh, uh, the things. I am, as you mentioned, you know, I'm in Tel Aviv. But my heart now is in New York and in London and in Los <laughs> yeah. Angeles and in Warsaw and in Prague. But we also have cinemas in Israel and they are also unfortunately at this stage still closed.